Okay, great. So um, let's get started. So um, thank you very much, Amanda and Peter, for um, coming today to join with us with our first ever foundation webinar. Um, so we have families from Hong Kong, Japan, Singapore, and China, of course. So um, yeah, so let's get started. Um, so Peter, do you want to share something about Salisbury? Good morning, everybody. Or actually, it's uh, good evening to you in a different time zone. Uh, but very glad and honored to be here. We've had a long partnership with the foundation, and it's nice to have a colleague, uh, Amanda from Dana Hall, working with me. And I'll share my screen. <coughs> um, I've had many roles at Salisbury. My current one is I'm the assistant headmaster for uh, institutional advancement, but have been director of admissions uh, for since 1998 uh, working at Salisbury. There we go. Uh, I'll tell you a bit about Salisbury and then I want to talk about the, uh, the, the boarding school process and studying in the United States. So Salisbury School, as you can see, was founded in 1901. We're two hours north of New York City, and I'll show you a photo of the uh, campus in a moment. We're 310 students, 95%, 95% of those students are boarding students. About 20% of those students are international students, including all the countries that were just referenced by the foundation. We are a boys' school, and in my presentation, I'll talk about the values of being at a single gender education, and we have years of experience <clears throat> in terms of helping boys through three or four years at Salisbury to achieve very good outcome results. You can see our facility on the left, a really safe, healthy, beautiful rural location. <clears throat> the new term we've all learned in the last few months is social distancing. Social distancing is not <laughs> very hard. Uh, in Northwestern Connecticut. In the last 20 years, we've done about $80 million in improvements on campus. Our, our first focus was to work on the academic facilities. And then the second piece was to do the co-curricular facilities, like you can see the basketball court on the slide. Uh, our goals moving forward is that we will continue to support the school for uh, fundraising for endowment. <clears throat> not necessarily building. We have a, a, a facility for 300 students that's second to none. The other space we're in is talking about academic tradition and innovation. You know, the, uh, just as an example before, I think for all boarding schools, you're going to find that in the last 20 years that our campuses have all been transformed. Uh, transformed in the sense of uh, providing space that will give uh, the students there plenty of facilities to realize their opportunities and dreams. Similar to this, another metaphor would be our humanities and sciences. If you see the photos on the left, uh, there's a very sort of traditional model. In the United States, they talk a lot about this being the Harkness model, a, a discussion base, the classroom you can see above. But if you see every one of those desks, they could be moved to, to being uh, a linear style in the sense of taking an exam. But the, the lower photo is a physics class. Um, and uh, you can see they're learning the physics of a pulley. And uh, project-based hands-on learning is very important for boys and being in a boys school. On the right uh, side of your screen, the economics and the arts, or perhaps the screens were reversed. But you can see too that, that we have designed a curriculum that is gonna be very much what we call boy-centric. Uh, again, project-based learning, but studying the economics and studying the arts. And you can see the field trip they did last year to the, the Google offices in the greater uh, New York City area. And our digital media work that we've done. And if you get on our um, landing page of the salisburyschool.org website, you can see uh, we've done a lot of uh, webinars that we've uploaded. And we've done a lot of virtual content that you can consume, but it's all been in-house produced. Academic excellence, it's interesting how people will define this. And I think that, that sometimes, and I also know that whether it's domestically in the United States or otherwise, that people often come up with ranking lists, so to speak, for schools. And I think the, the oversight people make is that uh, success at a school, every, you know, I say always that, you know, our, on the side of rigor, that we have 17 AP classes. I've yet to teach a student in my 
20 plus years at Salisbury who's been able to take all 17 AP classes, but there'll be a diversity of offering at all these boarding schools. I think key on the other side is transitionally, as one comes in, uh, do you need extra support? And we always want our boys to be self-advocates, seek extra help, uh, chase academic excellence, uh, but you know th that's going to be central to the relationship they will have with the teacher. And this we we don't want this to be going to college four years early, uh, especially now. We want to be able to support the students academically and otherwise. I'll transition a bit away from Salisbury, but talk talk about what we call, and I always think of it's a circle of success for how you find success in the admissions process at boarding schools. And I, I don't, in the United States boarding schools, I don't think this has changed uh, in the last two months, that uh, the, the, the same jobs we're doing or the same connections we're making, it's just the delivery of those things will be a little bit different, as I mentioned the virtual website before, but it always starts at the top with you, with the prospective family. And hopefully your first contact, uh, it, it could be going to the, to the left or the right, but working with the admissions office. And remember, our job is not to be gatekeepers. We're not here to, to, we to not, our job's not just to let people in or not, it's to partner with you and partner with groups like the foundation. Um, our program, and you start narrowing things by, you know, what our program offerings are, or the focus, or what are our unique value proposition of the school. Again, the unique value proposition of Salisbury, the one single thing we promise is we're going to be doing everything right for boys. Every decision we make is what's designed for the boys. Uh, and as you go around, if you see, you know, we want our students to have a really good experience and outcome just as any school does and so uh, that leads to sort of the validators and whether it's a validator of, of the foundation or a friend that you know or in the process we want to connect you with people who know and have experienced a, a positive outcome result from Salisbury and then the word of mouth uh, the word of mouth uh, sometimes will be very unique to the person that's telling you. So I think, you know, we, we all need to make sure that we have multiple resources when we think about a school. The admissions process, you, you're, you're lucky that you're on this call today. Again, you're gonna have a, a, a good influence or validator uh, with the foundation, but we're gonna help you in every part of this process, admissions officers. Remember, we're experts on our schools and we're experts on admissions. Uh, you're gonna be an expert on your son or, or Boys, you're going to know yourself very well. If you think about what travel is, travel might have to be virtually temporarily. Um, we can talk about later in, in this uh, presentation about what our campuses will look like in the fall. I think before you'll ultimately have to make a decision, which is next April 10th after one's admitted to a school, uh, you're going to have a chance to have seen our campuses. Now, of course, uh, we don't know that 100% and can't promise it, but we do have a number of admissions officers that are going to open this up in the sense of you knowing us well. Uh, we're going to talk later about testing, but testing is, I think, one of the areas that traditionally has raised anxiety for people, uh, and it probably will, especially this year, just in terms of opportunity. And I know that schools, and, and I would guess Dana Hall is like Salisbury, but Salisbury's talking about other ways that we can have predictors for success, you know, predictors for success for match at Salisbury. Uh, the application, the best thing that happened probably about a decade ago is that we've all moved to online applications, so that'll be easy. And on the front side, I think as families are making decisions, it, it, it's fair for you to have a com conversation with schools about will the deadline shift. Um, and uh, it, that might, I know as an industry, we'll make some decisions together. We've been very collaborative in the last few months. And again, our goal is the same as yours. We want you to end up at the right school. And they always say, uh, the right school is the right school for you. The best school is the best school for you. So why boarding in the United States? I, I, I know that hasn't, this hasn't changed, okay? The, the advantages, and I'll talk about outcome results in a moment. But as you're now uh, looking for a really positive high school experience, and looking for a, a, a chance to chase academic excellence that'll help prepare you for college and later, 
one of the things we know about United States boarding schools is that there's a calibrated independence one's, one learns. Some of the bigger schools might have a lot of independence, so to speak. Um, Salisbury only being 310 students and knowing boys well, we're, we're gonna see our boys from 7.30 in the morning to 11.30 at night. There will be lots of touch points, and lots of partnership with parents. Uh, there'll be a diversity of experience. There'll be connection in the experience. The value for us, and I think one of the things um, our international families recently have worried about <clears throat> is if there's uh, xenophobia or um, you know, how they'll be treated coming from Asia. We, we actually have two international student advisors. Uh, one, uh, Yukon Lo, who's a, a native speaker and from China, um, works so closely with the boys and the families. And uh, this is something that we celebrate the diversity that our international students bring to the campus. And we want to keep this tradition and connection going. At dormitory life, for all of you, it could be a single uh, for, for the students, and it could be uh, a, a double. But the one thing, layers of connection in everybody's experience. Now, layer connection could be in the dorm, it could be in the classroom, it could be in sports, it could be in arts, it could be in music. But most of our schools are not hierarchical schools, if you mean. It's, it's more of a, a, a horizontal level in terms of you having opportunity from the moment you step on campus. And we always already talked about uh, inclusion and that uh, our class officers, <clears throat> uh, sometimes president of the school, uh, leaders in different programs, uh, again, are, are coming from the diversity of our student body. So why a boys' school? Uh, if I go back a slide, I, I'm sure Amanda will say the same thing from Dana Hall. Why a boys' school? Uh, there's going to be a balance and a focus on boys. And, and I noted before that you, boys will see girls in the weekend. I think families often or the boys often worry about that maybe more. But there's a compelling balance that fills one's potential. Um, our academics, uh, if you think about how one is a really good teacher, it's going to be auditory processing. Sometimes you need to sit and take notes. There'll be visual learning. And uh, again, the project-based learning. I always pick our arts program as a metaphor for really understanding boys. Now we have some boys who are very good with, with pen and pencil uh, to, to draw an intricate drawing, but we do a lot of gross scale things, whether it's filmmaking, graphic design, sculpture, boat building. Uh, and then I, I do know that socially, the boys feel very comfortable being themselves uh, and that without social pressure or peer pressure, they're more willing to take chances. To, to be part of the leadership program um, and uh, try new things where they might not be the best, whether that's uh, athletics or music or art. I'll finish with two slides, uh, one being about the success of our, our Chinese students. And I realize there's families on this call from other countries, so I think that it would absolutely be a parallel. But we actually have done a correlation from our students who take the PSAT their very first year at Salisbury. So for the majority of our international students, that'll be in the ninth grade year. And we've done a correlation of, of remarkable improvement, 290 points uh, during their time at Salisbury to their SAT. Um, cum laude is our uh, highest level of academic uh, success in terms of one showing intellectual curiosity and uh, being successful in the classroom and then graduation and beyond uh, again we uh, are, are so proud of, of the balance and the success the students will have that's why uh, Amanda and I travel to, to Asia every year to, to partner with with great programs like the foundation and then finally uh, this year is no exception uh, we typically uh, look for a balance of the total number of students from any one country in our graduating class. And that, that'll be true for our ninth grade group next year. And part of it is that as students graduate, we don't want to have too many students in any one class from one country because they do compete against each other, uh, we find from Salisbury. But if you just see our overall uh, IV acceptance rate has been exceptional. And it's not, not all about uh, where one goes to college, um, but I know that that's part of the reason that 
uh, a family, the job that the family is looking to do by coming to the United States. I would also say to the boys out there, again, this is not um, the most important thing because you're gonna have a really fun experience, connected experience while you're at a place like Salisbury. So let me, uh, I'll stop sharing my screen and, and give Amanda a chance to, to go here and look forward to answering questions later on. Sure, uh, yeah, thank you so much, Peter. So before we move on to um, Amanda, um, I think Sandy would like to translate a little, a little bit for our Chinese families first, because there's a very a huge tons of information there. Okay, should I, all right, well, perhaps I should have paused after every slide, would that have been no, easy? No, no, no worries, it's okay, all right. we're used to this. <laughs> it's thank all you, I'll mute, I'll mute myself. Yeah. 那刚才就是Peter老师就做了一个分享 然后Sosbury是个男校 动手能力，所以他们很多的这一些教学呢，都是会让孩子有一些实战的经历。然后，呃，就是有很多人会觉得啊，那可能就是是个男校，会不会，例如说，可能除了体育以外，其他的艺术啊，那些不太着重呢，
是说啊，那就是这个校园的氛围会是怎么样啊？就是对于中国孩子的这个呃。就是态度是怎么样啊？那其实呃 ，Peter 老师刚才也讲到，就是呃 s o u s b u r y 有两个就是国际呃这个呃就是招生的顾问。呃，老师，然后其中一个也是来自中国的，所以他们就是在这个阶段也是提供了非常多的支持。所以在这方面，呃，学校有百分之二十是国际生，所以他们对于国际生还是非常的重视，还是非常的呃，就是友善的。所以这个大家可以呃不用太担心。嗯，对。然后呢，最后就是呃，可能很多就是呃。中国家长比较关心的部分就是说啊，那可能是这个呃大学申请跟这个 SAT 的分数，那大家可能刚才有看到，就是说呃就是呃 s o u s b u r y 对于学生的这个支持，从他们的 PSAT 到 SAT 的这个分数的进步呢，就是平均有啊两百两百九十分，所以是一个非常。非常大的进步，这个就是呃归功于学校的这个呃努力，老师对于学生的一些支持。然后呢，就是平均就是进常春藤的这个比例的话是百分之八，就是整体呃在学生的这个比例上。然后国际生可能进藤校的这个比例是百分之三，但是呢，就 s o u s b u r y 的男生，他们就是中国孩子有百分之二十都能够进到藤校。所以这个也是非常的，就是让大家知道，就是当然这个不是唯一的结果，因为孩子在这个过程里面呢，是会有很多的成长的，呃，但是也能够看到最后的这个结果还是非常的令人满意。然后呃，最后补充一点，就是说啊，可能男校会不会很？就是说，这个生活或者是这个社交很枯燥啊，其实没有的。就是说，周末的时候呢，就是啊、呃，会有很多的一些社交活动。就是附近他们有好多的女校，所以他们周末的时候会有很多这一些，呃，设施这一些活动一起去参加。所以大家还是会不用太担心，是不是在这方面会有一些呃缺少？这个是不会的。Great, thank you so much, Sandy. That's that's a very good translation. <laughs> Right. So yeah,、um, if the parents have any questions, we'll leave it after、um, Amanda's presentation. So yeah, Amanda, would you want to share something about、um, Dana Hall? This is a very very pretty school in、um, in, in the、uh, in Massachusetts. I've been there like two years ago. Yes,、um, I'm gonna share my screen with you. I'm also gonna stop my video here、um, just to help with my internet connection. So I will come back <laughs>、um, at the end. But let me do that here. All right, and if you could just give me a thumbs up, Sandy, if you're seeing my screen on on your side. Okay, good, great. So thank you, Sandy and Iris, so much for this opportunity to share some of the unique components with all of you about a school for girls. My guess is that many of you are curious about what a girl school looks like, and perhaps even wondering. Why would someone choose a girls' school? So I'm going to try and help answer some of those questions for you today. But first, some quick facts about me and about Dana Hall. I have been working at Dana Hall for 15 years, and during my time at the school, I've traveled to various parts of the world, including nine trips to Asia to meet students and families just like all of you. This is my favorite part of my job, meeting all of you. Learning your interests, learning about your cities and countries. I was just joking with、um, Sandy and Iris that I will miss、um, coming to Hong Kong this fall、um, and having dim sum with them.、Um, I truly enjoy my travels. And so now, some facts about Dana Hall. We are located in Wellesley, Massachusetts, kind of where that star is on the right side of your screen. Wellesley is a suburban town of about twenty-seven thousand residents. Wellesley is a 30-minute drive from the city of Boston, and from Boston there are direct airline flights to many cities、uh, in Asia. Dana Hall was started in 1881 by the founders of Wellesley College as a school to prepare young women for university-level studies. We have to remember that this was a very new and different concept for the 1880s. At that time. It was unique to have a school that said that women are smart and capable 
and deserving of a challenging academic curriculum. We carry those ideas with us still today, almost 140 years later. Today, we are a boarding and day school with students from 15 different countries. Beyond the facts, one of the best ways to learn about us is to hear directly from our students. So I'm going to try and play a brief video for you here. The main student featured is Maya. She's a boarding student from Atlanta, Georgia. And Sandy and Iris are gonna give me a, a wave if this doesn't come through very well, but we'll give it a try. Being at all girls school, it honestly just opens up a new world because girls here actually they develop and they evolve into like the best versions of themselves. Being a teenager, part of what you're learning is who you are and what your identity is. And girls try on lots of different identities. Girls also get to be leaders. And one of the neat things about a girls school is that every single leadership position is held by a girl. Student leadership is present in everything. I have loved every minute of it, and it's so crazy because I've never had any experience with something like this before. So coming here and like just stepping out my shell, I love student council, I love working with teens, I love serving my classmates so much. This opportunity is an op opportunity for growth academically, socially, emotionally. One of the positive things I see about girls interacting with each other in a boarding atmosphere is that there's a lot of face-to-face -face interaction. Students, because they're living with each other, they have to have hard conversations with each other. But that's a really important skill to develop when you're this age. And I found that it is oftentimes much easier for our boarding students to transition to college. They just seem to navigate the social and emotional challenges with greater ease and a greater knowing of their own strengths in that kind of community. And I think boarding school is absolutely the best preparation. If your student is thinking about it, take the opportunity and try to explore it with them. And then you can find the right fit for your family. Coming to the school was like one of the best opportunities that I've ever been given and one of the best choices I've made. All right, so as you saw in that video, and as you'll see throughout the rest of this presentation, at Dana Hall, we have excellent facilities for our students, and as Iris said, a beautiful campus. However, the most important thing to learn about a girls' school is that our school is so much more than just buildings. At an all-girls school, we prepare girls for their future by helping them build their confidence. We inspire girls to become leaders and develop leadership skills. And we challenge girls to speak up, speak out, and dig deep so that they are equipped for the challenges and choices they will face as women and citizens of the world. In an all-girls setting, we have the time and space for our students to be self-advocates, to ask important questions, to challenge assumptions, and learn from mistakes. Girls are center stage in all that we do. Research shows that graduates of an all-girls school are, one, they are three times more likely to pursue careers in engineering than peers who attended co-ed schools. Research also shows that girls' school alumni, so girls' school graduates, are more likely than co-educated peers to have a goal of making a difference in their community meaning that girls' school graduates feel empowered to affect change. And thirdly, 90% of girls' school graduates believe that they had greater access to leadership opportunities at their high school, and 80% believe that they will actually continue on with leadership positions beyond high school. At Dana Hall, we are focused on helping girls access their potential. So how do we do this? Curriculum is really important and how we teach that curriculum is critical. Teaching girls is what Dana Hall does best. At Dana Hall, our best scientist is a girl, the leaders of all the clubs are girls, the strongest athletes are girls, the editor of the school newspaper is a girl, and the examples do not end there. We focus on connection, challenge, and encouragement. We also have some unique programs that help us to accomplish all of this. And so I'm gonna share a few of these unique programs with you here. 
The first is leadership. So as a school that has always had a female head of school, providing girls opportunities to learn leadership skills is at the forefront of what we do. Each year, there are over 75 different leadership positions held by our students. However, all students are given opportunities for developing leadership skills, such as collaboration, public speaking, teamwork, motivation, and communication. Leadership opportunities even continue after graduation. We have a very active alumni association, and this international association has helped our alumni reacclimate back to their home cities after university and often are great sources of res uh, great resources for professional networking connections. We also host She Sales, a day-long conference with a focus on women in leadership. And the conference offers networking opportunities, information sessions, and panel discussions led by our distinguished alumni. We are so lucky to have an equestrian program right on our campus. So we have a 45 stall barn. You can see some of the photos of that facility here. Again, this is right on our campus. There are two indoor arenas, one outdoor arena. We offer individual and group lessons, and some of our girls also compete on an interscholastic team. I mention this program because the goal of our athletics program is to provide students with many different ways to be healthy and active through traditional team sports, such as soccer or volleyball, tennis and basketball, or through something unique such as riding. The girls who choose to be part of the equestrian program learn much more than riding skills, however. They also learn about horsemanship, responsibility, teamwork, hard work, grit, and determination. Another way we encourage students to gain leadership skills and creative thinking is through our summer entrepreneurship program. This is a week long summer program for Dana Hall students to develop business skills in an entrepreneurial setting. Students work in teams to develop a business plan or product idea. And they do this from start to finish from finding an idea they want to develop to the research to presenting the plan to pretend investors they see the process through from start to finish. So our girls learn about things like the relationship between innovation and consumer value, provide exposure to um, market research, have experience with developing a detailed business plan and work with leading industry executives. And the final program I wanted to highlight for you is our senior project program. This is a two to three week internship for seniors during the last few weeks of the school year, offering them real world work experience. We want to give our students increased control over their own learning as they prepare to graduate from high school. The students design their projects from start to finish. They decide on where they want their project to be, who their mentor will be, and then to the actual work of the internship itself. And as you can see here, students have had internships in all sorts of industries from working at the Massachusetts State House as a legislative aide to lots of work in area hospitals. Boston has some fantastic hospitals um, and we have students that get to work directly with surgeons, um, physical therapists and other uh, medical professionals. And students then also use our access to Boston to be able to work in art galleries, elementary schools, advertising industries, um, investment banks, architecture firms, just to name a few. So how do we know if all of these programs are working? Our alumni, our graduates, they are our proof. Our students further their academic goals at universities around the United States and the world. With an extensive college counseling process, we help our students to see that there's not one right college. Instead, like Peter said, we focus on right fit. And as you can see from this list, our students go on to attend and be successful at a wide variety of highly selective colleges and universities. Furthermore, the paths of our alumni show that Dana Hall graduates are capable of anything. They are lawyers, doctors, filmmakers, entrepreneurs, scientists studying climate change, researchers at the World Health Organization, economists, journalists, educators, and more. 
They are successful in their careers and we hear from our alumni every year about how well prepared they were for college. So in conclusion, why choose a girls' school? Well, we know how girls learn, we know what girls need, and we know how to help girls achieve their best. We know that girls need greater exposure to science, math, and engineering. We also know that girls learn best when they feel comfortable sharing their ideas in unique and creative ways. And we know that girls understand their amazing potential when there are opportunities to try new activities. And so why think about Dana Hall in particular? Well, one reason is our location in our campus. As I mentioned, not only are we 30 minutes from Boston, but the town of Wellesley is one of the safest towns in Massachusetts. In addition, the town center is just a five minute walk from our campus where there are shops and restaurants, a grocery store, coffee shops, even a train station to take students into Boston. Boston itself is an international and historical city it has museums, sporting events, cultural celebration, outstanding universities, and more. And as you have seen in this presentation, we have world-class facilities on our campus. Just in the last five years, we have renovated our dormitories, added an athletic turf field, opened a new dining center and student center, updated our main theater, and built a new outdoor equestrian arena. So our students have everything they need for success right at their fingertips. I wanted to just take a few minutes to mention a little bit about how things have changed for our students in the last few months, because um, a lot has changed in, in our world. Um, and because Dana Hall is a dynamic learning committee, community, just the way Salisbury is, um, all of our schools have had to be really thoughtful about moving to online learning this spring. So for us at Dana Hall, a typical schedule for students now includes two synchronous classes a day where students are actively learning um, with their teachers and classmates. We do these at all different times of day so that we can have students in different time zones um, participating. There are office hours for each academic department also happening virtually. Dance classes and other performing arts classes are continuing to meet. We've also had some nice community activities. So tonight, um, Friday night in some parts of the world or Saturday morning in other parts of the world, we've been having trivia games complete with prizes for our students. We've also had whole school uh, community service opportunities. All of our students work directly and closely with their advisor and those meetings have continued with at least a once a week check in with their advisor. We will be hosting an online graduation ceremony in the next week as well as award ceremonies. And we have a lot of traditions um, at our school and a lot of kind of fun memorabilia that happen at graduation and so just this week. We're in the process of sending boxes all around the world to our senior students that include some of those special um, memorabilia. Um, so while we would prefer to be finishing the year on campus, we have worked really hard to keep the fundamental goals um, alive. And that's you know, still having connection to each other, still offering challenging academics, and still kind of working together as a community to encourage our students to get through all of this together. We're also keeping our eyes on next year in terms of the application process. So I wanted to just briefly note a couple of things here. Um, we will finalize in August our application forms and steps. Those will all be available online in August. We are aware that we may need to make some adjusting and testing requirements. Both the SSAT and TOEFL are exploring options to take those tests at home. Um, we're waiting for a little bit more information from both testing centers about exactly how that's gonna be done and in which countries it will be offered, um, but we will continue to monitor that situation with you. If travel restrictions prevent you from visiting campus, we will continue to offer Skype or Zoom interviews. We've already been doing those for years and we will continue to do that. And we're in the process of working on a virtual tour to be able to offer families. 
So I will end there. I want to thank you all so much for, for listening and for taking the time to learn about our schools. I will stop sharing my screen and look forward to answering your questions. Yeah, so thank you so much, um, Amanda. So um, I personally as a huge fan of Grow School. I've been in a Grow School since primary school till like basically from first grade to 12th grade. So yeah, I, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm both for all girls' school. So sorry, um, time for Sandy to do some translation for our families. Mm Yang 那大家也会说啊，那就是现在，那我们还呃为什么要选择女校呢？可能女校这个呃就是概念的话，在香港或者是我们现在有新加坡啊，有日本的一些家长在听，就是他可能都会比较了解，但是在国内的话，可能是没
。另外呢，一个比较特别的就是啊、呃、，Dina Hall 会有一个就是骑马有马术的项目，呃，不知道大家知不知道，其实在，在呃美国的话呢，好多有马术的其实都是女校。对，然后就是说啊、呃，所以就是说学校除了一些呃，就是普通其他学校会提供的足球、啊、呃、篮球、排球这一些的呃团体运动以外，就是如果喜欢马术，就是对于马术有特别的爱好的孩子的话呢，也。就是可以留意一下，就是学校在这个马术场，就是在学校里面，所以是非常方便，不是说啊、呃、要就是去到呃外面或者是其他一个地方才能够呃做到这个就是运动这样。然后呃刚才也有讲到，就是说呃在这个暑假里面，学校也有这个暑假的这个企业家计划，所以是培养孩呃就是女生去做这个创业，就是将来可能是在他们自己的行业做一个比较领导的地位的，所以他们都会有这样的一些呃机会给女孩子。然后呃，就是说呃，关于这个就是呃，学校女校里面，就是刚才也讲到，就是说其实呃，学校给予很多的这种就是呃，理科的机会、理工科的机会，就是说不单是艺术，或是大家觉得是音乐的一些比较偏文的一些东西，就是理工科的一些潜能也能够很好的去发挥。那为什么就是呃？讲了为什么女校，那为什么要选择 Dana Hall 呢？就是刚才讲到，就是学校是在于一个非常安全的一个小镇，然后呃也是非常近这个就是波士顿的，就大概三十分钟也有就是火车能够直接直接去。那大家都知道波士顿是有呃一个就是很好的大学资源，也是一个很好的文化中心，有很多不同的一些机会，所以就是距离波士顿这个是学校非常大的一个优势。然后呢，就是呃，学校的设施当然也是非常的，就是不错啦。然后呃，刚才就是最后的一部分 ，Amanda 老师提到两个部分，就是说，第一，呃，就是说他们的这个线上。就是学习，可能大家也很关注最近，那呃所有东西都变成了线上，是怎么做的呢？那就是呃每一个部门，就是每一个不同的呃就是学会的老师，其实也是定期每周起码一次，会跟呃他们的学生去做一个线上的会议，所以大家还是有这个比较紧密的这个联系的，不会说啊就是有了这个距离，大家隔着屏幕，所以大家这个就是他们还是会很。就是注意这个人与人之间，就是孩子跟老师之间的这个呃联系吧。嗯，对。然后就是说，嗯、呃，他们下周就会有一个呃线上的毕业典礼，所以这周也是会邮寄一些呃东西，就是给所有的十二年级的毕业生。所以大家就那个、呃、关系还是非常的密切，没有因为这个疫情，没有因为变成了线上而改变。那关于这个呃之后一年的申请呢，呃，这个是最后的这个申请表格跟这个申请系统呢，就会在今年的八月份就是会上线了，呃，然后大家就是老师们也是知道，招生官也是知道，呃，可能会在标化考试方面会有一些的变动，那但是大家也可能知道，呃，两个考试的机构也是在研究不同的一些呃方法，就是有一些可能在家。呃，去考这个 SCT 或是托福的这个机会，所以这个也是会陆陆续续的，就是学校也会密切的关注在这方面啊、呃，就是我们不同国家的学生可以怎么去处理。然后，当然如果呃，就是在呃去这个面试呃去访校的机会，如果是因为疫情的话呢，就是学校也会继续做呃线上面试。那之前学校也很有经验在这方面，啊、呃，就是所以这个大家就不用过分的担心。Okay, great. Thank you, Sandy.、Um, so,、uh, so we are now moving on to our Q and A session.、Um, so we have、um, collected some. Hold on a second. So we have collected some um, questions um, from our parents. So we have、uh, around six, and、um, some parents also asked us a couple more after hearing,、uh, after listening to Peter's and、um, Amanda's presentation. So、um, let's start with the first question.、Um, so the first question, I think Amanda briefly、um, touched upon that, is that、oh, how are the students adapting to the online learning in the past two months? And also,、um, parents just want to know how have the teachers been supporting the students during、um, this period of time?、Um, so Peter, do you want to share、um, something about the online um, learning um, at Salisbury? 
I will. And I, I imagine that Dana Hall and other schools like Salisbury and Dana Hall have done the same thing. We started designing our program in late February and to, uh, took on best practices of what fit our mission statement back to you know the point of how do boys learn best. I think the other complicated layer is that we're dealing with different time zones. <clears throat> Ironically, uh, California, which is three hours time difference from, um, from the East Coast, is having a harder time than Asia. Uh, as you know, it's, a, it's let's just call it a, a, an even 12 hour difference. Um, the other piece is that if you just go to quantitative things, some of our boys are doing better than they've ever done before. And part of it is too, is that we have virtual office hours for teachers and communication is not, is easier in a lot of ways. The harder thing is sort of scheduling things for, for these meetings, but we have created time slots. And anyway, if you go to outcome results, um, I have an advisee from Hong Kong who his, his grades are as good as they've, they've ever been. And part of it is that uh, he's been able to find extra help resources, but he's still a motivated, hardworking student. Our goal for the fall um, is, and, and I know we're gonna talk about this later, but if a student has to lit, uh, uh, do distance learning, and our goal for the fall is to be uh, open and on campus, but we'll have learned so much in these last few months um, in, in a very positive way. Okay.好的，那刚才就是呃，Peter老师就讲到，就是其实学校在二月底的时候已经在呃，就是慢慢去做这个线上的这个呃，就是课程，看看怎么去可以最好的去帮助孩子。那就是说呢，呃，因为
嗯，那 Amanda 老师刚才也有讲到，就是说，呃，在呃这个寄宿学校里面，其实平衡这个学术跟这个全面的教育是很重要的。就是，呃，当然学校会继续现在提供一个非常呃，就是有竞争力、非常就是呃有挑战性的一个学术的课程，但是同时也是要在这个呃人与人之间的联系方面要哪个平衡，因为这个是。呃，寄宿学校最大的一个其中的意义，那学校也是会很有创意的去做不同的方法，像他们今晚就有个活动，然后他们有很多的这一些活动也是会继续的，呃，不是说单单是上课的形式，就是说这种呃游戏啊，不同的方法，他们都会去，大家呃希望呃可以拉近大家的距离，继续的保持这个联系。OK， great。So the second question we have from our parents, I know it, it might be a little bit too early in the process, but um, you know, as fa、um, families are pretty concerned about the standardized testing. So because like um, in um, the TOEFL and SSAT tests have been canceled in the past few months in China or even in Hong Kong and in、um, in America as well. So they're just wondering, will you be, oh, will Salisbury or Dana will be considering other language proficiency or standardized tests in the upcoming application season? So I'll start、um, this time. I want to just be careful here in saying、um, we don't have an exact answer yet.、Yep. So I don't want to name a test and have you all say, "Okay, we're going to go use this test now."、Um, truly, I think one of the most important things to know about the Dana Hall admission process is we're here to work with families. We're not out to be against families. So. We are going to be thinking very collaboratively、um, with our applicant families, making sure we're finding options that are going to be accessible.、Um, this is a worldwide pandemic.、Um, this is affecting everybody, and、um, we we understand that and we recognize that. So,、um, my best advice first, actually, is to take a deep breath and say we are going to work on this with you together. Um, and we continue to monitor both TOEFL and SSAT that are releasing at home versions. It's been a slow rollout process,、um, so we're waiting just a little bit longer to see how those go、um, before we make kind of any other next steps. Okay. Yeah, I'll just add quickly. Then you can only only have to translate once.、Um, Dana Hall and Salisbury are part of a, a lot of very strong collaborative admissions consortiums, testing consortiums,、um, and we're going to partner together. There, and、uh, all these schools are going to use best practices and thoughts. I think one of the things I could give for advice is,、um, I, I know that families traditionally use the summer to prepare for these exams. These exams will still be relevant and important、uh, going forward in the future. We just don't know how they're going to be delivered. Or how one will take them. Right, got it. Hmm. 好，那刚才呃，先讲就是说 Amanda 老师的一个想法，就是说现在因为还是有很多不确定性的，所以就是说啊、呃，能不能接受其他的测试呢？现在还言之过早，所以大家还是要再看一下这个情况。然后，但是呃，就是老师说的是呃，大家可以放心，就是学校还是会很体谅不同家庭的这个情况，因为这个也是一个全球的一个疫情，不是单单影响。某一个国家、某一个地区的孩子，所以大家是先可以放松，不用太担心，看看之后呃未来几个月的这个情况，再做呃进一步的计划。那 Peter 老师呢，也是说，啊、嗯，就是学校也是会很紧密的去沟通合作，然后呢，呃，大家可能也会暑假的时候，呃，会做一些这样的准备。那就是说，暂时来说，这些的测试 SCT 跟托福呢，还是比较重要的。所以就是说，只是要想一想怎么去呃，能够考，或者是怎么去能够让学校拿到这个成绩。所以就是大家也是可以呃，先就是再观看。Mm, great.、Um, so the next question we have is also about the application process, but this time is about the interview. So as we all know, interview is a very important part、uh, of the application process. So、um, the family just want to know: Are there any tips for applicants, and also what qualities are you looking for when you are reading the candidates' files?、Um, so 
Yeah, Peter, do you want to go first? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just alternate and who sure, goes. No Amanda made the very good point that we've been doing this a long time. You know, Skype was the original vehicle we used and, and now Zoom and uh, Microsoft Teams, FaceTime even for some of our candidates. But the tip I would give is what probably all the three of us did is that we made sure our lighting was good. We made sure the computer was positioned well. We made sure that we had good reception, that we're, we're dressed appropriately for an interview. Um, so I, I, those are the tips for the virtual piece. The, the other tips haven't changed at all, uh, you know, in terms of being prepared for the interview, you know, knowing that where Salisbury is or Dana Hall is or, or how so the size of our school or having an idea of some of the advantages of, of, that we market for our schools. The qualities we look for in a candidate specifically to, to the interview, um, you know, I, I, I think that'll be true to a certain school, but that uh, you're engaged during the interview and that you're prepared for the interview, but know that uh, if it's an on-campus interview, we want it to go well. And if it's a, uh, a, a Zoom call or a Skype interview, we want it to go well too. And most of the questions we're gonna ask, you're gonna be an expert on because they're gonna be about you, but they're also gonna be about what your vision and hope is for attending a boarding school in the United States. I'll just briefly add, I agree with everything that Peter said. Um, I always start my interviews by telling girls they are going to know the answers to all of my questions because they're all things about them. Um, so yes, you know, you are the expert on you um, and it's always our goal to learn, to learn about that. Um, I will just add too is, um, you know, have some questions ready too for your interviewer. That's a great way for us to know kind of what's on your mind and to help you learn more about us in ways that maybe we weren't aware of, you know, what you were curious about. Um, and to be honest, right, if you, um, there's something you don't have an answer to or you want to take another minute to, to think of an answer, um, to, to do that um, and just, you know, speak from the heart. Um, that's where I think students, you know, true um, personality is reflected is when you speak, speak honestly and from the heart. Right. I neglected one thing before the translation. Uh, I always uh, encourage boys to, to tell a story. So if the interview asks you, you know, what's your favorite color? Um, tell a story why it's your favorite color. We always remember those for our interview notes, right, Amanda? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so basically that one word answers, right? Giving an answer and then saying, saying why, why something's important to you. Uh,那就是这个是关于这个呃面试的一些呃就是提示吧，对面试的一些提醒。那就先讲，就Salisbury的，就是Peter老师的一些建议，就是说到时候啊，无论是视频还是说就是校园的面试，大家都希望是顺
There are lots of things I think you could do as a family. I think back to Peter's um, circle of success that he mentioned in his presentation, um, you know, to definitely, you know, look at our websites. Uh, most schools' websites now are full of videos, um, whether it's uh, a dance performance or, a, you know, a special event that happened or just a general information video. That's a first place to start. Second place is, you know, we have current families and alumni in all of the cities where, where all of you are located now. Um, so if you do not know of a family that would be connected to one of our schools, please contact our office and we will put you in touch with a family um, who can really speak from experience, um, either about their own as a graduate or their daughter's experience at our school. Um, and then third would be to connect with our current students. We are looking for ways to um, kind of mimic what the on-campus tour would be like. We find that the on-campus tour is not only how you see our facilities, but it's a great way that students get to meet a current student and ask uh, questions of a current student. And so we can hope to be able to continue um, that process just in new and different ways. So we'll be offering um, a lot of that online as well. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, please translate. Yeah,那就是刚才阿曼达老师讲到呢，就是第一学校的这个网站是一个非常好的途径。现在学校有很多不同的一些视频，那大家如果去Dana Hall的网站上面也能够看到，他们有很多就是学校的这些活动啊、呃舞蹈啊、音乐制作啊等等的这些视频都是很齐全的，所以就是这个是第一个可以了解学校最好的一个途径。然后第二的话呢，就是呃
guidelines for schools to be reopened in the fall, including colleges, universities, and boarding schools. And they've created guidelines that we're gonna be able to follow. Now, A number one, and, and I can't imagine Amanda or any other school is not gonna say the same thing. Safety and health will be number one for our students and for the faculty. But we are in the process right now. We have, call, we have uh, meetings three times a week where we're talking about how to design the opening of the school. Um, and so not to go into all the details, but uh, it, from what we know right now in May, uh, we're gonna be open in the fall. That being said, if there's a student who can't, for whatever, a travel restriction, uh, can't be on campus, um, we will have, um, we'll have distance learning open for them as well. And the, the other piece, just to give an idea for the, the United States, is that there are lots of colleges and universities that are spending time working on this. And again, back to sort of the, the, the power of collaboration that we will take some best practices from them too. Great. 好的，那就是呃 ，Peter 老师就讲到呢，就是在美国，他们每个州有自己的啊、呃，自己不同的一些例子，呃，就不同的法律去做这一些呃开学的安排。那他们在康州，然后康州他们已经有一些指示，就是呃，有一些给呃学校跟大学的一些提醒是，是呃九月份开学的安排，呃，所以他们现在是呃还是计划会开开学的。那但是如果说到时候有一些呃旅游的，限制就是啊、呃，就是过去呃飞去美国的这些限制的话呢，学校还是会提供这个线上的学习的知识。I will just add, I agree with everything Peter said、um, that we await、um, you know guidelines from our two different states. Peter has some in Connecticut and Massachusetts is is still figuring theirs out. I just want to point out one very big difference.、Um, when our schools here in the United States went to remote learning in March, we had very little、um, kind of lead-in time to that. We had a couple weeks to be able to make that switch.、Um, now, our school, Dana Hall, this Friday is, or sorry, a week from today, the 29th, is our last day of classes. Which means that we will have all of June, all of July, and all of August to really think clearly about our plans. We're going to have a lot more lead-in time、um, to either prepare things on campus to, as Peter said, make sure everybody is healthy and safe. That has always been our goal. That has never changed.、Um, Or if we need to have a combination of on-campus and remote learning, again, we have three months to be able. Um, to plan for that, to roll that out,、um, and to take what we've learned from the past few months of how how it's been going,、um, to make sure we have a great plan in place for the fall. Yeah, right. 呃，那就是呃，刚才 Amanda 老师有补充，就是说啊、呃，那麻省的话，他们还是在看这个呃，就是呃，指示，他们现在还没出来。但是呃，比较好的是呃，就是说之前呃，三月份转到线上的时候，其实学校只有几周的时间，但是也有一个很好的过渡。那现在的话，其实有三个月的时间，因为学校就在下周结束，然后六月、七月、八月三个月，那学校会呃有一个很好的制定，就是说看。看能不能就是做一个最好的安排，例如说可能有可能是线上加上线下的一些结合啊等等，这一些都会在未来暑假的三个月会安排好。Right. So、um, the next question finally is not about、um, the COVID-19 pandemic. So,、um, so most of the international families will be applying as a as a border. So they're just wondering what will be the travel arrangement for the shorter breaks. Um, for example, such as like the long weekends and the Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving break. So Dana Hall's,、um, we are both a boarding school and a day school, which means that some of our Dana Hall families live quite locally,、um, and that means that they act as host families for our international students, or really for any boarding student. Um, who might not be able to go home for a vacation? So our dorms close four times per year. Two of those vacations are long vacations, so in December and March. And during those two long vacations, most students go home 
um, or they meet their family somewhere in the world and, and travel together. The two shorter breaks, Thanksgiving at the end of November and one long weekend in February, that is when we either have students with host families, we might be offering our own trip. We've had trips to Washington DC or for a, a ski weekend in February so students can sign up for that. And the other thing is your children are gonna make friends with, um, with students who live locally too. And so those times are opportunities to just be invited to a friend's house and, and have a weekend um, at, a, at a family's home. Right. 好的，那刚才就是 Amanda 老师讲到呢，就是 dinner hall 有四个假期，那有两个长假，两个短假。那长假就是说这个圣诞节跟这个春假，三月份的春假。那这两个假期大家都呃一般会回家。那剩下的两个短假期，一个是感恩节，十一月的，然后另外一个是呃一个长假期是二月份的。那这一些的话，因为 dinner hall 也是有一些就走读学生，那呃学生之间也会有很多朋友的。那所以就是说呃。啊，他们本地的那些家庭就会做一个，就是可以让呃我们的国际生在那边去居住，所以就是这个呃学校也会就是照顾好。The only piece I would add、uh, that be different for Salisbury,、um, our policies、uh, for the fall won't be any different than they have been.、Uh, sounds like it's similar to Dana Hall. We keep our campus open during The shorter breaks, and we have all you know, sort of the fall long weekend, the winter long weekend, or the spring long weekend. So our dining hall is open, our school is fully staffed.、Uh, that will continue next fall. And then the other piece is that if you can imagine,、um, in March, if there were some families this last March,、uh, we had host families for those for for international students then as well.、Uh, It, we live in these wonderfully generous communities, and、uh, that includes our faculty and staff, but it also includes our our domestic, our, our American families that take take the international families in very often. And, and one of the great things of a American Thanksgiving,、uh, the tradition of it is to to bring in strangers and and share the meal. 那呃，就是 Peter 老师讲到呢，就是学校呃，在假期的时候会继续开放呃这个宿舍，开放校园。呃，这个其实在刚刚过去的这个三月份的春假，呃 s a l s b u r y 已经做了这样的安排。啊、呃，我们也有一个香港的学生也是留在了呃，就是学校校园那边，因为没法回来。呃，然后就是说，呃，那感恩节是大家美国一个很重要的一个节日，所以他们也是会很啊、呃，就欢迎一些就新学生啊，一些新朋友过去。所以呃，学校的这一些老师，学校的这一些呃国呃就国际生以外的本地生，其实也会很好的去照顾啊、呃、我们的这一些国际生。Right, so、um, we actually have two questions coming in. So that will be our last two questions.、Um, the first one is about the dorm arrangement. So the families are interested to know、um, how how will the school arrange、um, the dorms? Will it, would it be by grade or by nationality? And also, how many people are there going to be in a dorm? Yeah, you, one of the things I'll speak to is is what we've traditionally done for international students. We have、um, a ninth grade dormitory,、uh, and then we arrange students by grades for the ninth and the tenth grade. And then when you become an eleventh and twelfth grader, that、uh, you live together, and then we assign dorm faculty appropriately for that. Some of our boys will have singles, some have doubles、uh, in a traditional、uh, setting, and、um, we also, for somebody that English is their second language. We have them room with a, a student that doesn't speak their native language,、uh, you know, so they'll live with a, a, an American student.、Uh, anyway, I'll pause there. <laughs> 那呃，就 s o u s b u r y 的那个安排呢，就是九年级学生啊、呃、会在一起，然后十年级也会在一起，然后十一、十二的话，他们就呃会呃就是住在一起这样。然后呃，他们会有单人房或者是双人房。那如果是呃就是英语不是母语的孩子，可能英语能力还是需要提高的话，他们就会安排一个就是美国的孩子一起住，所以可以练孩子呃，让孩子可以更好的去练习他们的英语。
So I will just add a little bit. Um, our process is similar to that at, at Salisbury. Students are grouped by grade level um, and we make sure that it, um, English becomes the common language in the, in the dormitory room. Um, a couple of things I'll add is that we also have student leaders in the dormitory, student proctors um, who help the dorm parents to run the dorm, but also are just a tremendous resource, especially for our new students coming to the school. Um, they've been through homesickness. They know what it's like to be missing family or friends. They're great at giving tips on doing laundry and, you know, what store in town to buy laundry detergent or shampoo or whatever a student might be needing. So um, proctors are a key helpful resource. Our dorms also, they, they're really meant to be comfortable spaces. Um, so there's a kitchen in each dormitory so students can um, cook some of their own food. We also have big lounge area, not only just for dormitory meetings to help with that connection of community, um, but the girls can often just be found there relaxing, watching movies, and hanging out together as well. Right. Right. So here comes our last question of the day. So um, the students and also parents want to know what will be the weekend activities like or will there be any Saturday classes? So for Dana Hall, we do not have Saturday classes. Um, so Saturday and Sunday are really um, for the students to decide what they want to do. Um, and because of our location, as I mentioned earlier, we're about 30 minutes outside of Boston. Uh, we love to use our location as, as an advantage on the weekends and offer students opportunities to um, go to a sporting event, go to a concert, a museum, um, whatever it might be, we have a great student activities coordinator who's always monitoring the latest events happening in the area. Um, Peter and I are also very lucky. Our schools are in a beautiful area of New England, which allows for hiking trips and ski trips in the winter time um, and really, you know, using the great outdoors um, as opportunities. So, for Dana Hall, students have anywhere from eight to 10 different activities that are sponsored by the school that they can choose to do on the weekends. Students also love to just sleep late and watch movies and hang out with each other on the weekends. They can walk into town, they can go into Boston. Um, so it's a mix of kind of choosing what they want to do with their own time or signing up to do one of our offered sponsored trips. Right. 那Dana后呢,他们是没有周末的,就周六是没有课的,所以就是周末的话,呃,学校,呃,一般会有八到十个,呃,学校安排的一些活动,可能,呃,因为是利用到就是在这个地理的位置在波士顿附近,所以可能
uh, community-based weekend at our schools. And some of it will include co-ed activities and some will be on campus, some will be off campus. But if you think about how could you even program as a parent or as a student such a diverse weekend? Uh, and it's, it's in that connection and shared experiences that are the reasons that, that Dana Hall and Salisbury have, have a long history and, and, and will have a long, great history. Okay. 安排活動的,這個也是學校跟總督學校最大的一個區別,因為週末他們就是希望孩子有豐富的一個活動跟不同的安排。Right, so um, this is the end of our webinar tonight. So thank you so much for Peter, Amanda, and of course everyone from everywhere to attend our, uh, our webinar. So there will be more schools coming up to, um, to do some sharing. Um, we are running a bit short in time today, so if uh, parents have any questions, we'll be sure we'll be in touch um, and also ask them to reach out to you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. This was great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.